Hey guys, welcome to Doves Only Sports. Um, before we get into anything, follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I see you. You better follow us on those socials because we ain't been getting that much clout. We need that clout. Okay. All right. Remember that. But um, yeah. Um, yeah. Follow us on our social medias, uh, YouTube, Spotify. You can find us at Dubs Only Sports. I just had a friend that doesn't use YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok. He thought it was being slick, but we got the Spotify intact. Got a new follower. Love to see it. But enough about me. Let's get right into the video. This is going to be our first ever episode where we talk about the Premier League. For all you American watchers, the Premier League is an English soccer league um, comprised of great teams like Tottenham. And that's about it. That's really the only great team in the league. Anyways, <laughs> um, so yeah, um, we will be covering that because uh, they took a little bit of a break because of the World Cup. So now Premier League is back. We're going to talk about it. Um, what have you got for me? What are, what are we starting off with today? Okay, so we're like halfway through the season. We had a little break because of the World mm -hmm. Cup, which is a big deal. But they each team has played around 14 or 15 games. So around like 40% of the way there, like 35, 40% of the way there. Yep. So we're going to do some predictions for the top four teams in the Premier League, knowing the results. In the Right now, Arsenal's in the lead with 37 points. They're 12-1-1. They've been a big, a pleasant surprise, to say the least. They didn't even make the top four last year. This year, they've been the number one team for mostly the whole year, I'd say. And then we got Manchester City, who's second, and they have 32 points. They're 10-2-2. Two, two. They're always expected to win. Last year, they, they've won, like I think, like four of the last five titles. They got early in Holland, so they're always a big favorite. Then we have a surprise in Newcastle United in the three spot i don't think anyone expected that they have sure. i think they have 30 points yeah they've won their last five games which is very impressive i think they i don't know who they i don't know but they've been very impressive they're eight six and one so they've only lost one game i mean they've had a few draws but they're they're doing pretty good they're not they're not getting beat and then fourth yeah. is tottenham yeah. <laughs> very was... mid team to say the least but they're in fourth and they got the fighting Harry Kane's, the Mr. Miss Pel penalty in the World Cup, you know, choked England, you know, it's okay. And then, surprisingly, Liverpool is at six, and they were a preseason favorite to win the title, especially after getting Darwin Nunez. Manchester United, with the whole Cristiano Ronaldo saga, has found a way to be fifth, so that's a little bit interesting. And then Chelsea has been major disappoint disapp a major disappointment this year. They sacked Thomas Tuchel early in the year. They have Graham Potter, and they're they're really bad right now. So they're an eighth. And then for the relegation race, we got yours truly, Nottingham Forest. My dad. Okay, my dad is like the biggest Nottingham Forest fan of all time. He's pissed because <laughs> last year, right, Nottingham Forest were like <laughs> bottom of the Champions League. Champions League is the league under the Premier League. It's like if you're in the, it's like the championship. Like, the championship. Yeah, imagine like being in the MLB. Nottingham Forest were basically in the minor leagues. Like yeah. they weren't even in the MLB. They were in the yeah. minor leagues. Yeah. And they were at the bottom of that. They hired a new coach and just like were amazing for like no reason. And then made it up to the Premier League. But they are just so atrocious in the Premier yeah. League. And everyone three, is just better than them. Yeah, they have eight losses in 15 games. So they've lost more than half their games. They're pretty trash. Southampton is trash. And Wolves are in dead last. I mean, that's embarrassing. They should be ashamed of themselves. Trash. It's about time though. It's about time. So that's basically a quick recap of what's happened in the first 40% of the year with what happened in 2022. Now we're going into 2023. We have most of the games to play. So we're going to do a few predictions on what we think is going to happen. So first, let's start off. What's your top four for the final of the year? What do you th who do you think are the four best teams and who do you think is going to win, win the league and the, the next three teams at the end of the year? Well, I know who the top three teams are um, because they're the three – consistent teams in my book they're always at the top and those teams are arsenal man city tottenham those are i don't know i don't know who's gonna be one two what? tottenham's always there what are you doing? oh my god okay go ahead keep going keep going it's gonna be arsenal man city tottenham maybe not in that order but those three in particular okay. are, will okay. be a part of my top four the fourth one 
I honestly have like no clue because you look at everyone under Manchester United and it's just a crapshoot. I mean, Liverpool, uh, Brian and Hove, Chelsea, Fulham, Brentford, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa and Leicester City are all like kind of in the same boat here. I'll be honest. <laughs> I mean, Brentford, not a great team, but have had some upsets this year. Liverpool is supposed to be good, yet they play like crap. Brian and Hove Albion are supposed to be crap, but they play good. Chelsea is supposed to be good, but they play awfully. Fulham just got into the Premier League, so nobody understands how they're in the top 10. <laughs> Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, Leicester City are always in the middle anyway, so that's no big surprise. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, they all have like six, five wins-ish. And then if they don't have the wins, it's the draws that help them out more than anything. But they all have like the same amount of lo- it's like it's like even across the board. It's like being like six, six and six or like five, five and five. That's basically what we're looking at between like like places six to 13. They're yeah. all like it's like playing the same exact thing because they all have like players that aren't like the greatest in the league, but they're still like playmakers at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So you can't really like rag on them. And they like, you know, I look at Brentford in particular, like they've had some like pretty interesting games, which is why they're top 10 right now. But, you know, like for the fourth spot, I just don't know, like Newcastle, I haven't seen Newcastle do anything spectacular that makes me go, yes, they deserve to be there. The only reason why they're there is because they, 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 they've had six games where they drew, you know, like there's they're, no they have like eight wins, which is not bad. I mean, they have eight wins, but like Tottenham has nine wins. Okay, but they've you know? only lost. They've only lost one game. So like, even when they don't play great, they draw instead of losing, which is a big deal. Yeah, but that's not that's not like that's still not good because then it's like you don't have the capability to win games. You only have the capability to like at least not tie. lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, that's I, like I, that's I, yeah. awful. I feel like that's worse than losing. Like okay, to be fair. Bad. Okay. It gives you more points. Yes, obviously that's better. But like for the morality of it, like yeah. it, you must get so sick and tired to be like, well, we didn't lose, but we didn't win either. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I just feel like, you know, you I feel like you have part- no pick. I don't, I don't have like, I, I like if I had to go for like, if pick, I like, bro. come on, if I had a gun to my head and they were like, pick someone just for the experience, like, well, just for the experience, I would pick Liverpool just because I don't think Manchester oh, really? United. Will, okay. I don't think Man United will make it because of Ronaldo and all the stuff that's going on there. <laughs> but um, yeah, like if I had to pick a team, definitely not Brighton Hove Albion. Chelsea have yet to figure it out, and we're already halfway through the season. Fulham, Brentford, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, Leicester City, all the same team. In my books, they're all the same team. So you know, and I just don't think, you know, Newcastle are frauds. We're going to figure that out in the second half. Uh, Manchester United are going to go downhill quick. Okay. And I just feel like Liverpool, you know, they're not going to do great, but they're going to do better than all the average teams behind them. Okay. So if I had a four, again, not in any particular order, because genuinely don't like Arsenal could lose the rest of their games for all I know. But I feel like the three locks for me are Arsenal, Man City, and Tottenham. And then the fourth one, I feel like it's a toss-up between Liverpool and, like, the seven teams behind them. Yeah. That's All kind right. of it. So, I've, I'm not really sure, honestly, because this is a kind of an unexpected year. I don't think anyone expected Arsenal to be in the lead right now. I don't think yeah. anyone expected Liverpool to be sixth right now or Newcastle to be third. It's been kind of an interesting year. And then especially because we have the World Cup in winter this year, I want to yeah. see how that impacts everything because that's never happened before. But... I'm going to be very clear cut and say it. I believe that Manchester City is going to w- win the title. Lock. Lock. They are a lock. Manchester City is a lock for the title. They are going to win the title by at least 10 points. They are going to run away with the title. It's not even going to be close this year. Because of that- who? Erling Holland is an absolute stud, and we'll get into that later, but it is because of Erling Holland. Second, I'm not sure about second. I have this weird feeling that Liverpool can get into second. The problem is they're 15 points behind Arsenal. So I'm going to take Arsenal second. So I have Manchester City, then Arsenal. Third, I'm going to go Liverpool for third. I think that Liverpool is going to finish third. They're going to make a comeback. That The talent on that roster is the second best in the Premier League by quite a significant margin. So I think that Liverpool is going to come back. I think it's mostly that I just want them to come back because I had this expectation that they were going to be good before the year. So it's more like, I'm mm-hmm. trying to validate that. I still believe in them because they yeah. had like kind of a tough year, but I just believe I've before the season, I thought they were going to win the league. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to be tough considering they're 15 points behind, but 
I think they'll at least finish third at, at the worst. I think they'll finish third. And then fourth is very tough for me because I think it's between Tottenham, Man United, and then Chelsea and Newcastle. So I think those four teams are like the what the sports spot is going to be surrounded around. Mm-hmm. I think that we can eliminate Newcastle just because they're not as experienced in this position and because I just don't feel like they're as dynamic and the sense like if they tie a lot of games, they're not going to get enough points because other teams are going to win games. And I don't feel like, I feel like they're going to have some clunkers. They can lose to a bad team. I feel like it's more likely for um, Newcastle to lose to like Nottingham Forest than it is for Tottenham or something. Like, I just feel like they're going to like have a few bad games that are going to push them out of the top four. Um, then, then it's between Man United, Tottenham and Chelsea. Chelsea has been pretty bad this year. They, I think Pulisic's gonna leave. So I know he he doesn't even play that much, but I think Pulisic's gonna leave. I just don't think the coach has a good grip on the team. I don't know why they fired Tuchel because he was a great coach. He won them a Champions League. He won them tons of trophies. It wasn't working out for a short spell, and then they decided to fire him. I don't think that was a good decision. But the Chelsea owner is like the Dodgers owner, or whatever, and he doesn't. He's he's a baseball guy. He's obviously not a soccer guy. So I think I think he needs to reevaluate Ooh. that. So now it's between Tottenham and Manchester United, the two biggest sellers in the Premier League in the last five years, the teams that always have high expectations and always underperform every single year. And Arsenal was kind of in that boat, but now they're actually performing, so you got to respect them a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's between Tottenham and Man United, and it's a very tough one because on the one hand, I feel like Tottenham is not going to do great just because they're kind of inconsistent. They have some bad games that's totally inexplic- inexplicable games, but so do Man United. But then mm-hmm. on the other hand, I'm like, Man United should be good in the sense that they lost Ronaldo and they lost all that distraction and they were doing actually very well without Ronaldo. I'm not saying that they're better without Ronaldo, but they were doing very well without Ronaldo. And I feel like without the distraction of having Ronaldo there and like pouting and whining every day- game, I think that might help them just focus on the end goal, which is to win games. Mm-hmm. And I feel like all the signings that they've had have been good signings, like Casemiro, Anthony. I feel like all those guys, Rashford is back in form. I think that's really helpful. I don't know who else. I don't know how, who's going to be signed in this transfer window. Like, if Jude Bellingham goes to Liverpool, that changes things. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that'll happen in the summer if it happens. So, assuming that none of these teams gain anyone, which is not a correct assumption, but let's just assume that for now. I think I'm going to go with Tottenham at four. I'm going to go with Tottenham at four. Yeah. So that my top four would be Arsenal one or no no I take that back. My top four for the Premier League in 2023 will be Manchester City one by 10 mm. plus points, then Jesus Arsenal Christ. second, then Liverpool third, then Tottenham fourth, and Liverpool will be able will be very close to Arsenal and they're going to be within like two or three points. So you wholeheartedly believe, and let's keep in mind, right? Manchester City's goal differential right now is the highest in the league. It's at 26. They have a 26 goal difference, which means that they score a ton of goals, right? Yes. Yet they've won less games than Arsenal. Yeah. And they've drew and lost more games than Arsenal. Yeah. And they are two games behind them right now. And that yeah. is a generous two games. Okay. We're okay. Uh, Manchester City is five points behind Arsenal. Yeah. With 24 games left. 24 games i understand that but that means that means that there would have to be three consecutive weeks where just two just two no no it would have to be three because they would have to get ahead fat no. they couldn't get ahead by one they couldn't three get games. ahead by one score six points six points I, you win. but if they if they get up by six points that only puts them at 38 and man city and arsenal would be at 37 so they're only one point by and then if say say arsenal draw a game and yeah. Man City lose, then it's already tied. You need the three games. Okay, okay. I don't think Arsenal, everyone, like, Arsenal has one loss and one draw so far. I think that they're going to lose three or four more games, and they're going to draw at least three or four more games. Like, they're a good team, but they're not like... Yeah, the... and, and so will Man City. No, no, no. Manchester City will lose maybe one, maybe one or two games the rest of the year, and they might draw, like, three or four. Like You I think... act... You act as if like any field that Holland steps on, Man City will win Dude, that game. Last year, last year, let's look at this. Last year's team was not as good as this year's Manchester City. I mean, they were better. They were they played better, but mm-hmm. last year they went twenty nine six and three. So they had yeah. twenty nine wins, six draws, and three losses. Okay, already yeah. this year they have two losses and two draws. Correct. Yeah. So if they have two losses right now, 
I think that they might lose two more games the rest of the year. I think that they could easily go like 20 wins, two draws, two losses. Against Just based teams. off the team that they had last year. Yeah, based off the team that they had last year and based on – they took that same team that they had last year. They barely lost anyone. And uh-huh. they lost like – who do they – oh, they lost Sterling, Raheem Sterling. And they replaced yeah. him with Erling Holland, bro. Yeah. Early goal machine. I mean, the problem is that when you look at or I can easily see Arsenal losing at Leeds, for example. I don't know if they play at Leeds. They might, but I could see like Leeds beating Arsenal, or like I could see like Chelsea Chelsea beating Arsenal, even 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 at home. Like I, it just I could see Arsenal losing to worse teams. I don't see Manchester City losing to any of these bad teams. I think the only teams that could actually beat Manchester City in the second half are like maybe Tottenham, definitely not Manchester United. Maybe Liverpool. I mean, I maybe Arsenal, but I don't think I think Arsenal. Okay. Also, the thing is, Arsenal and Manchester City played twice. I expect Manchester City to win both of those games. I mean, you look at Arsenal, and the only two games that they messed up on led to a draw and a loss. Not even two losses, but a draw yeah. and a loss. Yeah, but I feel like they haven't played. Their competition hasn't been great. They faced a lot of teams that like. Luck, good times for them. Like they beat Liverpool early in the year, I think, if I'm correct. They and... beat they beat Liverpool on the uh they beat Liverpool like closer towards now. Let's see. Let, let's pull it up. Uh... They beat Liverpool on the what day? Give me a day. Okay, they beat. Okay, they beat Liverpool three two October ninth. Yeah, October 9th. But exactly, they beat them 3-2. That's that's like a close, very close game. It could have went either way. Yeah, because Liverpool's a good team. They're okay, a decent team. Yeah, exactly, but I'm saying they beat Tottenham 3-1. They, Which the is... only team that they lost to was um, Manchester United, and that was a 3-1 loss. But if they can lose to Manchester United, they can easily, they're going to lose to Man City. They're they... going to lose to Liverpool. <sighs> God, they lost to a Manchester United team that isn't even there go, anymore okay, right now. They have to go to Man City and they have to go to Liverpool. That's an easy two losses for them. No, it's not. You think that they're going to win those games or it's, I or think, draw? I don't think that. Uh, yes, I think they could. I think they they're will not going to win. Against, they're not going to win in Anfield or at the Etihad. They will beat. They will beat uh, Man United and they will draw or win against man I think it there's more it it's more possible that they will draw against City but I do not think that Arsenal will lose either of those games. I think that I think that Liverpool and City are going to pretty easily beat Arsenal at home at home. Those teams don't lose at home. I mean it's very rare for I mean Liverpool's already lost the game at home it's very rare for them to lose at Anfield. I don't know, I don't see it. I don't know. I just don't think Arsenal I think Arsenal like the same thing happened last year where they had like a really good start and then they just fell off. And it was it, just, it wasn't this good of a start. They were they no, weren't no, first. No, they no, no first. it wasn't this good, but it was still a good start. And then they fell out of the top four. They were like third, and then third and fourth for most. And then they moved to fourth when Chelsea went to third. But they were fourth for most of the year, and then they just fell out. And Tottenham took mm-hmm. over. Yeah. So, so I just I also think the big deal with this is that the World Cup just happened, and the games are kind of condensed now. So there's gonna be 24 games in a shorter time span. And I feel like yeah. Manchester City and Liverpool have better depth than Arsenal, like. I mean, like, at the same time, you have to look at it as, like, Arsenal, they have the space to make at least a couple mistakes. Like, at, at least, like, oh, yeah, miss they have out on a room. couple games. But they then that is – that then goes in hand with the fact that when Arsenal slips up, Manchester City has to be the one that takes advantage of that, True. whether they're playing Manchester City or or not. Because, you know, if Manchester City beats Arsenal, then that's three points for Man City and, you know, no points for Arsenal. But even that still puts Arsenal up top and Manchester City second, all for the points. But I I think that Manchester City is, like, clearly better than Arsenal. Like, I don't think it's that. Like, last year, when you look at the games, it was like Liverpool and Man City were basically the same level. Mm -hmm. It's just that Manchester City scored three goals in the span of 10 minutes to win the league. And that was that's why they won the league. But it was yeah. very close the whole time. Like Manchester City had a massive lead on Liverpool, but everyone knows the te- the two teams were very close, and Liverpool came back. Yeah, this year I feel like Arsenal got out to a big lead. They're, they've been twelve one and one. I don't care how good you think you are in the Premier League, considering that Manchester City has lost two games and drew two games. I don't think Arsenal is going to be as impressive in the second half of the year. And they have they they've literally only played they haven't played that much of the schedule. They've literally played thirty five percent of the schedule. They still have a majority of the season to go. So I yes. feel like they have a lot of room to fail. Like, I don't think they're going to be terrible. I think that they're going to finish second in the league. 
But mm-hmm. I just don't see them winning the league ahead of Manchester City. Considering that they have to pay, play tw- each other twice. So let's assume that let's just assume I I know that Arsenal might draw one of the games, but let's assume that Manchester City wins both games. Yeah. That means that Manchester City would be ahead of Arsenal. Do you think That's that Manchester points. City is going to do better against the other the competition in the Premier League or Arsenal? And even if they draw one and and Manchester City wins one, then mm-hmm. Manchester City will be two points behind Arsenal. You don't think that they could do three points better than Arsenal in the rest of the games? I think that they well, will. Well, no, because then they're relying on Arsenal to lose to teams that they're going to beat. They're not going to beat. Arsenal's not going to beat everyone. I'm telling you, Arsenal is not as strong of a team Dude, as you th- everyone thinks they are. As long as Arsenal is playing, like, again, the two teams that they slipped off on were Manchester United, who's fifth right now, and Southampton. Southampton is the only gimme game in there at 19, which is absurd, right? Yeah. But even then, they didn't lose to them. Yeah. But the thing is, if you draw, you lose two points. Yes, I, in in you don't, you don't technical terms, lose two points, but you lose you you lose the, the opportunity, opportunity the po- exactly. of losing two points. Exactly. So like Arsenal still has to go. Let's like let's look at their schedule right now. They play West Ham, which should, should be a win. Brighton at Brighton, which is a should be a, a win, win, but it could be a draw. They have no, to play Newcastle win. at home, so that's a win. Win. And then Tottenham at Tottenham, so I think Tottenham that's a win. win that. No, that's a win. Tottenham's not winning that game. You think that Arsenal's gonna go to Tottenham and win? I watched the way Arsenal played against Tottenham oh, in that yeah, three to one win, and they just looked dumb. They just looked like the better team. Okay, uh, they're beat. As a Tottenham fan, I'm yeah, saying that whatever. Arsenal. I, will I, beat I don't. Tottenham. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. But that's okay. Arsenal at home versus Man United. That should be a win or a draw. Yeah. At Everton is a win. Yeah. Brentford at home is a win. Manchester City yeah. at home is a draw or a loss. I don't think that they're Fine. winning that. Yes. Aston Villa at Aston Villa is always tough, so I think that could be a draw or a win for Arsenal. Wow, yeah. Leicester City at Leicester City, draw or a win for Arsenal. I think Leicester City could win that game. I mean, that they're, they're tough always. Uh-huh. Arsenal at Bournemouth, that's a dub. Or no, not at Bournemouth, at home versus Bournemouth, dub. At Fulham, Fulham could be tough, but I think Arsenal's going to win, so that's a dub. Fulham's going to drop off soon. Yeah. I don't see it. Arsenal at home versus Crystal Palace, dub. Arsenal at home versus Leeds, Dub Arsenal at Liverpool L, Arsenal no. at West. It's a guaranteed L. I'm telling you, Liverpool no, it's is going to be Arsenal at home. I'm telling. It's and not this guaranteed. Is, this is in April, dude. Liverpool might that, still that be Liverpool Champions that Liverpool Arsenal game will be a nil nil draw without a doubt uh, in my mind Liverpool because that's what that's game. what that's what Arsenal is going to work towards no. at that point of the season. They're only going to work towards draws just to pick uh, up the points. Then they have to go to West Ham, which they could lose at West Ham. I mean, Manchester City almost lost at West Ham last year. That's a tough game. Arsenal at home versus Southampton. At Manchester City, guaranteed L. Arsenal against Chelsea at home could be a draw. I could I could definitely see that as a draw or a Chelsea W. Because mm. I don't think that I wouldn't predict Chelsea to win, but Chelsea could definitely beat Arsenal. I don't I don't I don't think anyone disagrees. Then mm. Arsenal has to play at Newcastle, which could be an L also. So mm. again, then Arsenal at home versus Brighton, that's a W. Then at Force. Imagine Force is the reason that Arsenal doesn't win the league. Imagine- After blowing them out by five goals. <laughs> Imagine Forest. Imagine like they're tied and then they lose to Forest and City wins, bro. That would be crazy. But that'd be crazy. I I just don't see it, dude. I think I think. Look at it. Had a good think game. about it. what they you just said enough- right now. What you just said right now. You said that there were five games. I counted it. There were yeah. five games where not okay. There were five games where you said that they would they would lose. Yeah. And four of them were they would possibly lose. Okay, but like Liverpool, no, Liverpool and City are definite L. So that's six. That's six points that they lost. And then at Newcastle, and is is could be an L. I I just I think that also Arsenal has been so so much above what they actually are at the beginning of the year that they could easily just like not be as good as everyone expects them, like or as good as they are now. Like what we think of them now, it could drop off. Like Chelsea last year started the season really good, and at the end of the year they just started dropping off. I just well, don't yeah think because Chelsea doesn't continue. Chelsea doesn't have the Chelsea doesn't have the resources that Arsenal has right now. They don't. They last, they last never year's did. Chelsea team. Last year's Chelsea team was the same team that won the Champions League, and you're telling me that that team it wasn't it wasn't the same team. It was they literally were, the same team. They did, they it, they had like everyone the same. Like it was the who it wasn't they the not ex- have? it wasn't the exact same team. Their substitutions, their substitutions in that Champions in, in that Champions game was the, was the reason why they won that game, and oh, they man. and they lost those substitutions. Dude, I don't know. And the, and then look what happened the next year when they when they, they didn't almost, have Okay, no 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 no. Pause. Chelsea 
barely lost to Real Madrid. They lost to Real Madrid in the second leg in extra time in the Champions League, and Real Madrid won the won the Champions League. So like, Chelsea was still a very good team last year. Chelsea was they clearly, were. without a doubt, the third best team in the Premier League last year. Yes, they were a good team. But yeah, this so, year we have seen that it's yeah. not looking too hot. But they weren't. Chelsea was not the best team. They were the third best team. Yeah, but and now that, they're the eighth best team, and they yeah. are how many points behind? They're like twenty points behind. No, no, no. no. Oh, they're, they're, oh, yeah, they're sixteen points behind Arsenal. Yes, they're they're very far behind Arsenal, so they're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna overtake Arsenal. But there you go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Liverpool's fifteen points behind Arsenal, and I've been, I've been constant. I don't. They're know, eighteen. Think, what are you talking about? They're 15, 15, 15, 15. They are fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, but I don't know. I just Liverpool was fifteen points last year behind City, and they came back. So I don't put anything past Liverpool. I gotta say, they they were they were they were like nine. Yeah, nine Liverpool's, to Liverpool's fine. Liverpool's yeah. chilling right now. Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea, so Chelsea, historically, Chelsea screwed. Chelsea if they're screwed. not there, they're done. Yeah, Chelsea screwed. Chelsea might be able to sneak into fourth if they take over for like Tottenham or Man United. But I don't, I don't. I mean, they're like what eight points behind Tottenham, five points behind. They could pass Man United, but I don't yeah, know. Just, Man United, they'll pass Man United. They will finish fifth. That is that. Yeah. I don't or, know. Well, I, They'll they'll replace they'll replace Newcastle and they'll jump Tottenham and they'll finish yeah. third. Know, that's so that's where Liverpool's going. Yeah. So what think about thinking? it. They're they're only like uh, they're only eight points behind Newcastle. As long as Newcastle lose, like they're going to, and Liverpool wins, all it takes is three. Oh games. no, Liverpool is fine, bro. Liverpool's gonna be Liverpool's gonna finish top three. Lock like they're that team yes. is yes. Like I've never been worried about Liverpool because they have so much talent on their roster. I mean, Alexander Arnold missed games. Um, Robertson missed games. Their midfield is really old, and they've they've had some injuries. Luis mm-hmm. Diaz, if Luis Luis Diaz is out right now, yeah. But if he comes back in like March, those games from March until May are all W's. I mean, yeah, he is a stud, an absolute stud. one of the best wingers in football. He's rising. I mean, he's a really good player. So mm-hmm. if they do anything in the, tra- I want to see what happens in the transfer window. Like if Arsenal gets a few guys, maybe I change my mind. But I just. I think that Liverpool's depth is a lot better than Arsenal's depth. I know that Liverpool has to play more games, like the Champions League games, everything like that. Mm. But I just think that in this kind of year where it's a condensed schedule, 24 games in a shorter time span, the team mm-hmm. with the most depth is going to win. And mm-hmm. I think that Manchester City has the most depth by far, so they're going to win. And then Liverpool is going to be right there and Arsenal is going to be there because they have such a big lead now. But I think Liverpool is going to come back because the depth is going to help them. They get if they play their second round of guys, they still like on their defense. They take out Matip, they put in Kanante. They take out uh, Virgil Van Dijk, they put in Gomez. Like they have guys that they can just put in. Whereas other teams, they're they're the guys they put in are a big drop off from the starters. So I just mm-hmm. I don't know. I think that I feel like my, my top four at the end of the year is going to be City, Arsenal, Liverpool, and then Tottenham. Yeah, I'm still sticking with like I I still think Arsenal's going. to... I think they're just going to finish out the season. It'll be it'll be Arsenal. Man City, uh, Liverpool, Tottenham. That that's my top four locked. All right, and then after looking at that, out of all the teams, let's say teams seven through twenty, is there yeah. any sleeper team that you think is going to have a really good second half besides Chelsea? Because Chelsea is like kind of yeah. expected to do well. Besides Chelsea, is there any team seven through twenty that you think is actually going to finish in the top, let's say eight, for sure? Dare I say? Dare I say the trees? No, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I feel like Nottingham Forest. They, they have, have like 13 points right now, bro. I know. I just find it so weird because, like Jesse Lingard, to me, I look at that decision and go, "Yes, Jesse Lingard at to- uh, at Nottingham Forest makes sense." But uh-huh. just hasn't shut up. And between him and Brennan Johnson, it's just been like such a weird dynamic between those two and it seems like when one guy is like doing really well the other isn't and then vice versa so maybe they figure that out but my sleeper team the entire season has been brentford like to be fair the i bees, love the bees baby, the bees brentford i don't know i just like you know I, i've just i've just liked them the uh, like the entire year and you know i look at their win against your so beloved man city and go hey <laughs> You know they they have the they have the potential. They and also I mean, beat you know, United like they dominated United. They beat them like four yeah. Nine. But then yeah. it's like you look at like you look at like you know all the times that they drew to teams like Bournemouth, Man, uh, Nottingham Forest, uh, Wolves. You know like those are all like bottom like league teams. But then they draw to like Chelsea, 
and then they be and and they uh they only lose to Fulham by one but you know and they like they tie to Leicester yeah. it's just you know like Brentford is very like you know it's like one of those teams that like if you if it's it's like if you bet on them and they have a good day you're gonna get you're gonna get paid a lot but like the odds of them having a good day are just as equal to them having a bad day. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think that like, I don't think Brentford is going to do like anything crazy. I can see them finishing like five or six to be fair. If they like, cause think about it. If they just like stay in their lane and just continually like draw against these teams and then just allow all the other teams ahead of them just to fight it out and then lose those points then I could see them just like slowly making their way up to the point where they just end up fifth, and yeah. like that be that. But, you know, again, like that's just a really big ask. I don't think Brentford's going to like, you know, I, like they're, I don't think they'll make it into the top four. They might not even make it five or six, maybe like seven or eight, but you know, they have been like shockingly decent. Like yeah. they're like, you know, they have four wins, but two of those wins were like, First of all, dominant wins and against yeah. teams that they really shouldn't have beat, like ever, like in a million years. So there's that. And then, you know, like, again, it's like the seven draws for them. Like the seven draws is why they're there. It's the same thing for yeah. why Newcastle is, is yeah, third draw. right now. Instead of losing, they draw. Which they is draw. Amazing. Exactly. And if they keep on doing that, they will like that They'll again. They'll stay that's there. That's right. Newcastle, Newcastle. The only reason why I'm having them dropping is because they're going to lose games. They're not going to draw games anymore. They're going to lose. Yeah. Brentford, they will continue to draw games. Yeah. So, you know, like I could see, I could see Brentford like finishing with like maybe like 10 wins, like not even, but finishing with like 16 draws. <laughs> no, I see that. That's possible. I, I kind of like that team. I think they're kind of dangerous. I'm going to say Aston Villa. I think that Aston Villa. Yeah. I just, I think that I don't think they're going to finish that high up. I think they'll finish like eight or nine. Mm-hmm. But I just think that they have. Emiliano Martinez, absolute stud from Argentina. So they mm-hmm. got a good goalie right there. And then I just like the way that they look. Like, even last year when you looked at them, when they played Manchester City in the final day of the year, they were up 2 nothing and they blew the lead. But they took a 2-0 lead at Manchester City when Manchester mm-hmm. City needed to win that game. So it just shows, like, they're kind of a dangerous team. And they almost beat Liverpool the game before. So, I don't mm-hmm. know. I think that they're always just a, a team that's lurking there. And they have a dangerous team. They, have the, they got the coach, Emery, from... Um, what was it, Vill- Villarreal, and they made the Champions League semifinal last year. So they have a decent coach. Um, I just I think they're a dangerous team. They have a good goalie. If they mm-hmm. score a few goals, I think the problem is going to be scoring goals. But if they score a few goals, I think that they can move up a little bit. I feel mm-hmm. like they've had – I mean, they've been, what, they're 12th right now? I think it's a little disappointing for them. I feel like they'll go up a little bit. Yeah, again, like, you know, the teams, the teams in front of them are Crystal Palace and Brentford. Yeah. The thing that's killing Aston Villa right now is they just lose games yeah. way too often. They have, they have seven, seven losses. losses. Yeah. They have the they have the third most losses, but yeah. they're the highest up with uh, like they're the highest team with seven losses. Yeah. To be and they have five wins, which is impressive. I mean, five wins is yeah. It's like one just, like they have one less win than Liverpool and Brighton and Chelsea. So. And and the goal difference isn't really that bad. Like minus yeah. six, it could be like you know being yeah. an under five hundred team. Yeah. Five, like being only six goals away from the difference is, yeah. you know, pretty impressive. But I mean, you know, you look I mean, at their Leicester schedule. Has a zero goal differential. So that's like also impressive. I think Leicester could make some noise. I mean, they're all, Leicester's always there, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I feel like with Aston Villa, like I see, I, I can kind of see why you picked Aston Villa. And it's solely because in the, in the games that mattered, they show up like yeah. to be fair. I mean, yeah. you know, their game against like their second game of their season against Manchester United, they beat three to one at Man United. Yeah. I mean at Aston Villa. But then they go to Newcastle and then lose that game 4-0. Yeah. So you it's, know? Like, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But then they at home against Brentford, they win 4-0. But then they go away and they lose to Fulham 3-0. And then they tie against Forest. They tie against Leeds. But then they tie against Man City and only lose to Arsenal by one point. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's like it's it's very like it's very like up and down with yeah. with Aston Villa. It doesn't it doesn't like quite make sense because you know again they played they played Manchester City twice and the goal difference in between those uh between the matchups they've had against Man City is only negative one. Yeah. So you know and Man City uh Man City has the biggest goal differential in 
the league. It's like what 20, 26 is their goal differential oh, right now. Yeah. So, you know, like it's just uh, like I, I can see why you pick Aston Villa. They, you know, when, when the games that count, they do show up and they do like, you know, they know that when it means something. But the games that aren't like, you know, oh, this is in the bag, they lose or drop, yeah. which is why that, they have so many losses. That is the problem. Like yeah. the Crystal Palaces, the the Everdens, the Nottingham Forest. It's like they should be performing well against them and but they just not. don't. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I understand that completely. I mean, <clears throat> we've talked about the top four. Yeah, we've talked about the sleeper that maybe could potentially make it at least close to the top four. But how about the three teams that are going to get relegated? Oh, God. You know what I want to say about this? I really mm. want Everton to get relegated. Really you do? Bad. Really bad. I feel like it is about time. I feel I, like I think that they, they've been a terrible team for the last few years. And Jordan Pickford deserves to not like not be in the Premier League. That guy is an mm. absolute bum. He yeah. thinks he's that guy. He's not that guy. Yeah. I can't. I mean, I can't believe he's still starting for the English team because just his attitude is so annoying. I mean, who does he think he is? He thinks he's like that guy. He's not that guy. Yeah. He never wins anything. Imagine being like the starter for the English national team and playing for a team that's in the relegation race. I mean, if you're that good of a goalie, England's goalie should be like top four in the Premier League, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no reason that the the starter on the English national team should be 17th in the Premier League. They deserve to be out. I remember last year I was watching the Liverpool Everton game. They were they were trying to slow the game down. They wanted to draw Liverpool super like really bad. They wanted Liverpool to not win the league because the rivalry or whatever, but they were playing the game with like such low class. They were like, like flopping the whole time, hard fouls. They were slowing the game down. I mean, literally like, it wasn't like the world cup where they gave a ton of added time. Like they weren't giving a lot of added time and they were just wasting time. Like literally Pickford would get the ball and just sit there for an hour, like totally annoying team. They, They barely score any goals. I mean, they've. I think they've scored eleven goals this whole year. I mean, that's pathetic. So yeah. I, I don't know. I just they need to leave. I kind of want Forest to overtake them, but I say that the three teams that are going to get relegated. I think Everton's going to get relegated. Um, I'm surprised Bournemouth is that high at fourteen. I think that Bournemouth is kind of Bournemouth. Yeah. Bournemouth, to be fair, have had some pretty interesting games, and yeah. I don't think Bournemouth will get. I don't think Bournemouth no, will get I relegated. Think, I, think I know. I know. Ex- I know the three teams exactly that are going to get relegated. I've got them in my mind right now. You know? I already know the three teams that are okay, going to so get relegated. Okay, so I'm going to go. I'm gonna, right now. I'm going to go with Everton, um, Wolves, and I'm going to say that Forest overtakes Everton, and Everton doesn't. So Everton, Southampton, Wolves. Everton, Southampton, Wolves. Yeah. Um, mine is okay. So. Um, being in a Nottingham Forest household here, unfortunately, <laughs> I have been forced to sit down and watch these atro- <laughs> atrocious games <laughs> that Forest have played. And I have seen the way they play. I've seen the dynamic. I've heard my dad yell, scream, whatever you want at the TV, right? And all I can say is it would be an absolute miracle. <laughs> yeah. It that's what I'm be... hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for, bro. I want them to make it so bad, bro. Mm-hmm. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be Wolves, Forest, Everton. I think Southampton can get. I think Southampton can get out of there. But I agree with you on Everton. It's about time that they drop to the relegation. Maybe be humbled a little bit. They're trash. They've been in this league for way too long. Yeah, they're trash. Like they need to, they need to leave. So, yeah. If, if it, if it's not one of those three, I feel like Leicester City. Leicester City, Leicester, Leicester City? City, I don't like. I do not like Leicester City. They're gonna at go all. higher. I'm telling you, they're gonna go up, bro. I don't. Uh, no, I don't see. It. I don't see it in Leicester City. I can see them going from 13th and finishing like 16th. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, I mean, you know, um, our first Premier League episode. Wait, uh, pause, pause. You know what we need to get into now? Oh, what? Golden Boot Race. I oh gotta talk god. about my guy. I gotta talk about oh my guy, bro. God. I gotta talk about my guy. So I'm just gonna start off by saying, I know that everyone's gonna have have all their comments. They're gonna, all the haters are gonna come out. Early in Holland is gonna break the Premier League record for goals scored in a season by at least five goals. This guy is an absolute stud. Right now he's at I think 18 goals. Right now they have mm-hmm. 24 games left. He's mm-hmm. averaging 1.5 goals per game played. So he's he's just absolutely dominating the competition. He's playing yeah. with amazing players against competition that's a lot less than his own team. So he's going to be just piling goals up. I think he'll get to 40 goals. I think he's going to – the Premier League record is 34 goals, I think. 
and then mm-hmm. the in a uh, twenty in a in the the set the schedule that they have now in a thirty eight game schedule, I think it's like thirty two. Mm-hmm. But I think that Erling Holland is going to just run past this record. I think he's going to get 40 goals in the Premier League at least if he stays mm-hmm. healthy. Manchester City is going to score tons of goals. I mean, already they've scored 40 goals this year, which is the most in the Premier League by quite a substantial margin. I think that they're going to pile in goals. I just think that Erling Holland is like an absolute set. I think even though Erling Holland is going to break the record for Premier League goals scored in a single season, he's going to finish third in the Ballon d'Or. Behind who? Kylian Mbappe second, and Messi first. That's the thing. I just, I, as much as I think that Erling you Holland know. is an absolute stud, I don't <clears> think <throat> that Erling Holland is going to, even though he's going to break the Premier League record for goal scored in a season, he's going to get to 40 goals in my opinion. I just think that with the World Cup, I, I think this is a big issue for Holland not being on a team that's in the World Cup. Mbappe was amazing in the World Cup. That's going to push him forward. He's going to have a great season at PSG. He's playing against terrible competition. He's going to score tons of goals. And then Messi, if I believe that PSG, even though they have to play, I think, Bayern in their first round of the Champions League, I think that they can go really far in the Champions League this year. They almost beat Madrid and ended the whole Madrid miracle run last year. I think that PSG is going to make a big run at the Champions League this year. Messi has been playing amazing. Neymar is playing good. Mbappe is playing good. They have some questions on the back line. And sometimes they just the defense of Neymar, Messi, and Mbappe being so bad really hurts them. But I think that they're going to make a run for the the Champions League. And even if Manchester City wins the Champions League, I don't think that I, I that's what would be interesting. If Manchester City wins the Champions League and Holland scores all these goals, I don't. Who do you give the Ballon d'Or to? Do you give it to Holland or do you give it to Messi? Like let's say that PSG and Man City are in the final of the Champions League, and yeah. it's a one nil game, and Holland scores. Who gets yeah. the Ballon d'Or? Holland. Holland gets the Ballon d'Or, even though Messi won the World Cup and took his team to the Champions League final. Yeah, you want to know why? Why? Because Holland creates the opportunities for himself. Oh, that's cap. That's total cap. That's t- no De Bruyne. De Bruyne creates a ton of opportunities. Silva no, he a- does not. Silva oh, creates don't a ton even of get me started on De Bruyne. Dude. No, no studs. That, that's Manchester City uh, midfield. Does Holland oh my off every goal? That's the, difference. That's the difference between Holland and other strikers. Whenever Holland gets an opportunity, it's in the back of the net. I don't care what it is. He doesn't like create the opportunity in the sense that he doesn't like dribble his way and then score. He just when the cross comes in, he scores it. Or like when someone gets a through ball, he scores it. He just he finishes. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, he's a stud. But I I don't think he's gonna finish top three in the Ballon d'Or. I think or I, I think he's gonna finish top three, but third, not not first or second. I just I don't see it. He's gonna win the Ballon d'Or. He's gonna win. Holland? Yes. Early in Holland's gonna win the Ballon yes. d'Or. Man City is not gonna win Jack, but he will win the Ballon d'Or. Wait. So you think that they're not gonna win anything and he's gonna win the Ballon d'Or? Yes. Dude, if no one wins anything, then Messi's gonna win it, bro. He already won the World Cup, dude. I don't... Doesn't matter. Just because he won the World Cup doesn't mean he automatically gets in. Dude, watch. It they that's they care so much about that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, bro. But he already has it. Why does he need it again? Because he, ha- he gets it every year. He's the best player, bro. Just give him more awards. Eight Ballon d'Ors, bro. Like, give us them, bro. He was the best player in the World Cup. Yes, for by PSG, such a margin. It was, like, it was like him and then Mbappe and then everyone else. It wasn't even close. Yes, but on PSG, and yeah. especially Mbappe on PSG, yeah. at- atrocity. An absolute atrocity there. I don't know. Because they, that- be, they should be performing so much better. You got Neymar, Mbappe. PSG hasn't lost in nine months. I understand. No, no, no. I understand that. I understand that. But you look at the way that they play their games and you look at the teams that they're playing because the teams that they're playing are nowhere near the Premier League teams. Okay, but Premier League teams are totally overblown. I mean, this is the problem. This is why Premier League teams very rarely win the UCL. I mean, Liverpool has won it and and Chelsea has won it. But this is why it's very rare for them to win compared to like Real Madrid and Barcelona. It's because everyone overhypes the Premier League's talent when if you look at Spain, Spain has a lot of good teams. When mm-hmm. you look at Italy, Italy doesn't have the top level teams, but their teams are good. Like Napoli is good, AC Milan is good, and Inter is good. They're all good teams. I mean, Inter beat Barcelona twice. Like, yeah. they're a very good team. So, the thing is, like, in the Premier League, everyone hypes up, like, Chelsea this year. And even you look at, like, like look at the Premier League. Brentford, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, Leicester City are all, like, not good teams. Like, it's just, they're not as bad as, like, some of the teams in France, but mm-hmm. they're not great teams. I just think that I don't know. I, I I think that, as I said before, the Ballon d'Or is going to be Messi, Mbappe, Holland, And then another point I want to bring up is I think that 
when we look at this year, this generation of players, I think that we can compare Holland to Ronaldo and Mbappe to Messi in the sense that not in the sense of how good they are, but in the sense of the kind of players that they are. Mm-hmm. More so in the, the sense of Holland and Ronaldo and that they both are very good finishers. They finish opportunities. They score a ton of goals. I think that Mbappe yeah. and Messi are a little different because Me- um, Mbappe relies a ton on his speed. And he, he is very good at dribbling. Like he, his, his technique is amazing. But I think he relies a ton on just his speed on the wing and just running past guys. Whereas Messi's dribbling is just from another planet. So you can't compare anyone to Messi's dribbling. But I mm-hmm. feel like they're more finesse players. And Holland and Ronaldo are more just like brute strength and just finishers. Mm-hmm. But like the kind mm-hmm. of player. Yeah. I mean, going back to the golden boot, I don't really see how you can give Lionel Messi the, uh, the, the, Ballon the Ballon d'Or. I mean, you know, Mbappe has 12 goals. Neymar has 11. You Look think... at the assists. Look at the assists. Yes, the they all have Kylian Mbappe. Like it literally, like on the stat sheet, it literally just looks like he never passes the ball. Like to be fair, he has two assists and fourteen <laughs> matches. But Messi and Neymar, they both have nine and ten, right? Yeah. But then Messi, you know, Neymar still has eleven goals. Okay, but who won the World Cup and who is the best player in the World Cup and who scored? Okay, but the World, World Cup World? is so much and different. Like, but it still matters. It still matters. I'm like they were putting Jorginho in the in the uh, Ballon d'Or race last year when he won the Euro. Jorginho, who's such a mid player, yeah. And they were putting him in the Ballon d'Or race. You don't think they're gonna put Messi in the Ballon d'Or race just because he won the World Cup? Like he could have a. I'm not a saying mid- that he's. I'm not saying that he's not in the. He's always in the goddamn race. He's messy. Like you know, that's like despite the fact, you know. Yeah. Like he's always gonna be in the race. It's just that PSG and the French League won so awful. Like That's so fair. incredibly bad. That's like true. if you're if you're if you are able to score seven goals in one day, you're playing awful teams. I mean, I agree. I just think that the Premier League's level is a little overblown all the time. And I think that if PSG do t- like lose to Bayern Munich, then no, Messi and Mbappe should not win the Ballon d'Or. Yeah, but if they make it to like far in the Champions League, I think that they have to be in in consideration for the Ballon d'Or because of the way they perform in the World Cup. I mean, even you got to you got to admit it. I mean, yeah, it, like it does make sense like, you know, definitely like, you know, Mbappe, Holland, and Messi, I feel like without a doubt are like I don't think the anyone three... else can win the I don't think anyone else can win the Ballon d'Or this year. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, like there's not, not a single person he hasn't even had that great of a season. He's been hurt. And then yeah. Real Madrid is not going to win the Champions League this year. Like, I just don't yeah. see it happening. They have to play Liverpool in the first round. They they might beat Liverpool. They probably are favored against Liverpool and probably will win, but they're going to have a tougher road this year. They have to play... Li- I mean, last year, there was a... T- last year, also, they had such a tough road, and they got... I'm not going to say lucky, but they, they were lucky. I mean, to score two goals in the last five minutes against Manchester City, to score, like, a goal to tie the game, to take them to extra time against Chelsea, to yeah. score three goals in ten minutes against PSG, to beat Liverpool 1-0 when Liverpool were clearly a better team than Real Madrid, but Liverpool just, they, they missed their chances. I mean, Sadio Mane hits the crossbar. Manchester, um, Real Madrid had the magical season last year. I just don't see them be able to repeat it. I think that, I, I don't see that happening. So I don't think Benzema is in it. And then, I don't know, who else who else is even in the Ballon d'Or race this year? That's why. It's just those three. Those yeah. are the only three that really stick out to me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like there are a few teams, like, uh, not teams. Uh, There are a few players, like, here and there that are like, yeah, like, you know. Sure, but it's nothing like nothing like no, it's those, like the those three contenders are those three. But yeah, PSG, you know, yes, they are a good team, but they're a good team in French League One. I they're agree, not, I agree. They're not good anywhere else. I mean, French League One, they have if, if a PSG 34, was in the Premier League, where would they finish? If PSG was in the Premier League, I think PSG would be they would finish, they would finish high. Don't get me wrong, they would finish high. Oh, really? But, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be top. And they wouldn't have – they have a 34-goal differential right now. <laughs> 34 they goals. Finished, they would finish first or second in the Premier League. I think second. Behind you know Chelsea. what the second-place team in French League won? You know what their goal differential is? What is it? 16. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. And they're only winning by five okay, points. But you can't even lie. The Premier League is also kind of a joke. Like, when we compare – Soccer the second, the bottom sports. half, the bottom half of the Premier League, yes, is a yes. joke. Like yeah, that's what I'm saying. a lot of Compared these teams, the Premier League could be yeah. eight teams. Yeah, real yeah, talk. That's what I'm saying. Like the Premier League, it literally should just be boiled down to Arsenal, City, Newcastle, Tottenham, United, Liverpool, Chelsea. 
And PSG. If PSG was in, yeah, and PSG. I think I if mean, PSG, if if PSG was a part of it right now, I think they'd PSG, be ahead of Arsenal. No, they wouldn't. They would be under Arsenal. They'd be under Man City, no, and they they would be ahead of, They'd finish ahead of Arsenal without a doubt. No, they wouldn't. You PSG. I and don't care. Arsenal. PSG. We've only seen PSG. Oh my God. For, you That's said you insanity. That's they insane. haven't lost a game. They haven't lost a game to like all these like mid teams, right? PSG's mm. top three players are so much better than anyone else on Arsenal. It's like not even close. And then even like Verratti is good, and like they already have Hakimi's very good. I mean, they literally are like an all star squad, and you're telling me that they're and Arsenal's better than them. I'm I'm not saying that like the players on Arsenal are better than the players on PSG. I think the team that Arsenal brings onto the field every single game they is played, better than the they team played better that than PSG almost brings. Anyone in the first 14 games, they're not the best team in the Premier League, and they're not. They would not be better than PSG at all. They're not. They're just not. They're I just not. think I think it would be something to watch. They better win the Europa League because, like, I don't want to hear any of this excuse. Oh. Like, then if they don't win the Europa League, you can hop on my bandwagon about how they would be awful. Not awful, but they would be they wouldn't be the best team in the English Premier League. They're not English English soccer is different from any other league. There is not another league like the Premier League. The Premier League is the that. hardest league in the it up world. So much. Okay, but it's not about Spanish, hype, it's true. Why do the Spanish teams always beat them in the Champions League every single time? Because Spanish players have historically been better. That's why you have that's why you have like Spain winning World Cups. Yeah. Because Spanish players better. are good. They're better. Yeah. And if you put the best Spanish players against the decent English players, the Spaniards will win. Uh-huh. That's how it works. That's a yeah. formula for success. So Real Madrid and Barcelona would beat basically all these teams besides City. And Arsenal. And Liverpool. And Tottenham. No, and Liverpool. And Manchester United. Fuck, and Newcastle. Put Newcastle in the mix. <laughs> Newcastle goes to Camp New, bro. They're getting clapped. They're no, getting clapped. That's an easy dub. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Oh, um, my. I mean, yeah. So, um... Anything else you want to, you no, know? That's basically it. We got a lot of yeah. back. Like that was that was funny. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, our first uh Premier League video. Hope you guys liked it. Um, you know, especially since Premier League is now finally back. It feels like forever since I've watched the Premier League game. I'm so excited on Boxing Day when it comes back. But um, yeah, um, Premier League games are back. Uh, make sure you go walk watch them. You can support my Tottenham Hotspurs. Um, we're not the greatest, but we're okay. And um, for my dad's sake, just don't hate on Nottingham Forest that much. Um, they're just bad. They're going to get relegated. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for us. Make sure you go into our social medias on TikTok and Instagram, Twitter. It's going to be at Doves Only Sports. Follow us on all of those. And then uh, we have a podcast. We have a YouTube channel. You can find both of those by searching up Dubs Only Sports in the uh, search bar um, on YouTube. You're going to subscribe to us. Click the notification bell so that you get notifications every time we upload. And then uh, Spotify, just follow us and Spotify will send you those notifications automatically. Um, but other than that, that's going to do it for now. Um, if you're watching this or, well, I say if you're watching this, you'll you'll probably be watching this after Christmas. So hope everyone had a great Christmas. Um, if you're watching this before new year, have a great new year and yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna do it for me. Anything else from you? No, that's it. Happy holidays, everyone. All right. Happy holidays guys. Um, yeah, I can't even say we'll see you in 2023 because we still have videos that we need to push out here, but we'll see you guys soon. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.